Something comes into the frame and ch chasing it and fires at it. What the hell could do that? This time on Unexplained Mysteries, Undercover UFOs. We'll investigate important clues that prove the government is engaged in a massive UFO cover-up. Our government has flat out lied to us for 40 years or more. We'll show you the government's distortion of the truth. This is That's lying through your teeth to the American people. The military's mysterious black projects based on alien technology. Is this otherworldly technology that's being applied to Air Force black projects? The scientist who was ordered to study an alien UFO. Our group basically was to back engineer them and see how it was fabricated. Uh, and try and duplicate some of that technology with earthly materials. The military cover-up of a dangerous UFO threat to our nuclear air bases. Whatever this was flying around could just penetrate all these defenses at will. And the government's use of threats and fear to suppress the truth. The powers that be knew I was charged to you, it would be a high price for me to pay. You'll find out why the government is reluctant to admit the possible existence of life on other planets. The reason being that it could cause widespread social unrest and possible deterioration of government control. We'll hear from witnesses of saucer-shaped craft that might have been designed and built by the Air Force. My gosh, those are flying saucers. Those things really do exist. And we'll give you our final analysis in our Monex Report as we blow the lid off the government's UFO conspiracy on Unexplained Mysteries, Undercover UFOs. Since the first sighting of a UFO, evidence suggests the U.S. government has lied to the American public to cover up the existence of alien spacecraft. Our government has flat out lied to us for 40 years or more. They've threatened people and intimidated people. They've spied on UFO groups, infiltrated UFO groups, spied on researchers, compiled dossiers. Their response is bordered on paranoia. The CIA says that it does not collect information on UFOs, and it hasn't since the 50s. There are reams of documents squeezed out of the CIA that indicate that they have on staff CIA UFO experts agency personnel monitoring the situation on an ongoing basis, they lie. The Air Force studied UFOs closely. A squadron of pilots had a unique mission, find and photograph UFOs. Pilot Guy Kirkwood witnessed an amazing scene, 16 unidentified objects two miles away. They broke rank and just started moving uh, all over. They were below us, they were above us, they were out in front of us, and accelerating, literally at lightning speed. And a dot in the distance, maybe several miles away from you at that point, maybe a pencil point, all of a sudden closing on you at the rate of several thousand miles an hour, and a 36-foot object, which is basically almost the same size as our aircraft, a 36-foot wingspan. But all of a sudden this thing is just closing on you faster than you're able to think. The Air Force suddenly terminated the UFO search squadrons. Years later, Kirkwood started talking about what he saw, and two government agents accosted him. And they said, well, the government doesn't like the information being released, and to continue could be detrimental to your health. UFO experts maintain that the U.S. government conducts research at a top-secret base in Nevada known as Area 51. An aerospace engineer who worked there could not believe what he saw. Got out of the bus, I was told to walk directly through the hangar, and uh, immediately, uh, even before entering the hangar, you can see the edge of a disk. Uh, this is your classic flying saucer, two inverted pie plates, if you wish. Uh, with a segmented larger area dome on top. Within minutes of that, I finally realized that this had nothing to do with something the government was producing and that was 
quite shocking because everything inside was small. This is a full-size craft, 30, 35 feet in diameter, maybe 40. Uh, but you're looking at at uh, seats that are you know, 18 inches off the ground, obviously made you know, for, for something smaller. It certainly wasn't made for children to play in. The U.S. government denies working on alien spacecraft. They also deny that Robert Lazar ever worked for them. Records of Lazar's employment have vanished. But two important items of information offer solid proof. A W-2 form stating that he worked for naval intelligence and a listing of his name in a government lab phone book. After Lazar came forward, he was threatened by government agents. Many others suffered the same fate. One after another had, had visits from, from government personnel who basically intimidated or told them to back off, followed them around. I've been covering organized crime in Las Vegas for, for 10 years, dealing with uh, mob hitmen and mob informants, uh, people who have been in the witness protection program. The fear that is generated by this UFO subject for people who really know about it far outweighs the kind of fear that the mob inspires. I mean, people are more afraid of our government than they are of organized crime. Despite the risk, Lazar maintains his conviction. I am exactly sure of what I saw. I know what mainstream science is like. I know what, where physics stands. I know all of that. And this is an extraterrestrial craft. This technology is hundreds and hundreds of years in advance of us. And that's the end of that story. The U.S. government has a history of withholding secrets from the public, LSD experiments on human subjects, radiation tests over cities, the stealth fighter project, and the U-2 spy plane. The government has a name for their policy of systematic lying to the public. It's called disinformation. Our government does it all the time. There are even printed guidelines for how cover stories, disinformation, are supposed to work. While serving at NATO headquarters, Bob Dean saw super secret documents dealing with UFO sightings called the assessment. I have to be honest with you and tell you that that information literally changed my life because I knew for the first time that this, this subject was not fantasy, it wasn't myth, it wasn't legend, it was real, it was true. One of the reasons I'm violating my national security oath is that I believe that the American people are losing their constitution because of the secrecy and the cover-up. Officially, the government investigated UFOs under the name Project Blue Book. Now, I look upon Blue Book itself as a little bit of disinformation to tell the people, yes, we're doing something, when in reality, Blue Book, as we understood it, was simply a public relations front. Many experts feel the government will go to any length to conceal the truth. To give you an example of the most recent example of absurd disinformation was this incident involving the Roswell incident. First, the Air Force says it was a weather balloon. And 50 years later, they said, gee, guys, we're sorry. It really wasn't a weather balloon. It was much more than that, but it was a balloon. Project Mogul. Well. I'm tempted to use terms that you'll have to bleep out. This is uh, That's disinformation. That's lying through your teeth to the American people. And if that isn't disinformation, I don't know what is. Coming up, the frightening UFO threat on our nuclear arsenal. The classic flying saucer. And it shot a beam of something at our warhead. Find out about the military's top secret black projects. Area 51 is the most tightly secured installation in this country. I saw the object exhibit entirely unconventional flight characteristics. The government's search for extraterrestrial intelligence, which was abruptly terminated. The government would never make that leap of faith that the public uh, would be able to handle the fact that we are receiving intelligence signals from somewhere else. Eyewitnesses who saw UFOs parked on an airbase. Hey, my interest perked up instantly when I began to see literally hundreds of photographs of all types of quote-unquote flying saucers. 
and the government conspiracy to crush the truth about UFOs. I don't think the military has any credibility with the public in terms of its denials of this program or that program. And we'll give you our ultimate account with our Unex report. Stay tuned for more on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries Undercover UFOs. The longtime U.S. policy of lies and disinformation may have put the public in danger. Security at several U.S. nuclear missile bases was breached when eyewitnesses reported bright lights just 200 feet from the missile silos. The speed it took off with, I've seen F-16s fly high rates of speed. And this was here and gone from a dead still hover. Wordsmith Air Force Base, Oscoda, Michigan. Shuttered now, it was an important part of Strategic Air Command's Northern Tier Nuclear Bomber Retaliation Force. An alarm sounded when several unidentified objects showed up on radar, and they were headed straight for the airbase. Stop rock with an expedite scramble. Authentication time is 1906. Scramble. Roger that. As UFOs flew towards the nuclear weapon storage areas, jets tried to intercept them. But by the time the pilots got there, they were gone. There were at least a dozen U.S. and Canadian military bases that were overflown during a three-week period. Air Force personnel reported numerous sightings and radar contact of the UFOs in official documents. All of the incidents took place near nuclear weapons facilities when one object came low over a weapon storage area that appeared to demonstrate a clear intent over this area, meaning it seemed to have intelligence. I was awakened in the morning by a bright, glowing orange colored light. Looked out over the creek, there was a large, glowing orange oval-shaped object. It hovered over there for, I'd say, a good three to four minutes. It sped off at a high rate of speed heading away from the airbase. I was scared. I, there was fear running through me. In their public accounts, the Air Force officially denied all the reports. It's very difficult to find military witnesses because they're, at the time, covered by regulations. I decided, along with several other researchers, to file freedom of information requests with the Pentagon. The Air Force documents stated, quote, Penetration of sensitive areas during the hours of darkness have prompted the implementation of Security Option 3 at our northern tier bases, unquote. The reason this is so significant and interesting is that they seem to be focused on atomic weapons. These bases, because of what they stood for, there are massive retaliation capability and therefore there were very high security bases. Whatever this was flying around could just penetrate all these defenses uh, uh, at will. The important question, did the UFOs affect the missile's ability to launch? Malmstrom Air Force Base had several intrusions near missile silos, one involving an object which, according to one witness, hovered over the silo and somehow managed to change the tracking numbers on the missile. According to the witness, the missile had to be removed and retooled to make it work again. And to see this, not in UFO books, but in government military messages, was a real eye-opener. And I, I think that if the public had known that at the time, it would have been great alarm. About 10 years before, Air Force Lieutenant Robert Gibbs witnessed something remarkable. Hair's going up on the back of my neck right now thinking about it, just remembering that day. I saw something that was so strange that it changed my life. Jacobs was in charge of a special unit that filmed Minuteman and Atlas missiles during launch tests from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. So my job was to provide photographic documentation from 30 or 40 different camera positions for each launch. We walked onto the missile and we saw all three stages of powered flight. The camera followed the missile through its successful flight. 
Now, what we didn't know is what else we had got besides the missile. Soon after, Project Director Lorenz Mansman called Jacobs into his office. There were two guys in gray suits in there, civilian clothes. They were not in the Air Force. They were from somewhere else. They never identified themselves. They could have been CIA, OSI, OSS. All four of the men watched the film of the missile flight. The nose cone spread out. The warhead was quite plainly visible. Something flew into the frame. What I saw was a circular object. It was a classic flying saucer. And it shot a beam of something at our warhead. You have to imagine this thing is flying along at several thousand miles an hour. This stuff is flying along and something comes into the frame and ch chasing it. And comes in like this and fires at it and goes around like this and fires at it and goes around like this and fires at it and fires at it like this and then goes back out that way. What the hell could do that? Suddenly, Jacobs was in the hot seat. And he said, what was that? And I said, it looks to me like we got a UFO. And he said, you are never to say that again. As far as you're concerned, Lieutenant Jacobs, this never happened. And I was sworn to silence, reminded of the, security, of, of the severity of a security breach, and told to leave the room. After keeping silent for many years, Jacobs went public. The Air Force responded with complete denial. The Air Force denied that I was ever there. Despite the existence of the film, the Air Force denied that Jacobs was in charge of the special photo unit. They even denied he was in the Air Force at the time. They denied everything. Records reveal that Jacobs was in the Air Force, that he was in charge of the photo unit, and that he was filming that day. Major Matsman, his commanding officer who screened the film with him, wrote a letter confirming Jacobs' account of the UFO. The Air Force is probably not going to like this film, but there's nothing they can do about it. It exists, it documents the telescope, the people who were there, including me. And if there are any ramifications about it, I guess I just don't care anymore. Next on Unexplained Mysteries, is there a connection between top secret black projects and UFO sightings? Certainly some of these things are going to look very strange. They're very unlike aircraft with which people are familiar. Is the military using alien technology in its black projects? I think the technology at Area 51 originally came from somewhere else. And what happens to people who want to get close to Area 51? I think that could be the biggest and perhaps the last mistake they are going to make in their life. We'll show you why NASA terminated its own probe that was getting information to life on Mars. They said that NASA or the government might want to consider keeping the information from the public. And the government abruptly stopped its search for extraterrestrial life. For certain people, that's not something that they want to either believe in or allow anybody to know that they believe in. We'll expose what the government does to military officers who report UFOs. I got letters from high-ranking officers that they had no record of such an aircraft ever existing. And we'll sum up the UFO conspiracy in our UNEX report. There's much more to come on Unexplained Mysteries. Undercover UFOs. Black Projects. That's the name for secret military development efforts. Certainly some of these things are going to look very strange. They're very unlike aircraft with which people are familiar. There seems to be a connection between black projects and UFO sightings. Well, certainly the history of the uh, flying saucer phenomena suggests that in the past, classified programs resulted in a lot of reports of flying saucers. And if you see all of the instances where conventional aircraft have been misinterpreted as flying saucers, it's quite easy to understand how unconventional aircraft could receive a similar misinterpretation. In the Nevada desert, we have things out there that are, that are literally out of this world. Groom Lake, Nevada, also known as Area 51, where experts believe the military is working on top secret projects. They have a hangar near the south end of the ramp 
that appears to have doors that are almost 200 feet tall, uh, 400 feet wide. You can put anything in there. One of the problems associated with Groom Lake is the fact that it is a place that not, does not officially exist. Area 51 is the most tightly secured installation in this country. It's guarded both over the air and on the ground by elite Air Force security police and Department of Energy special response teams. If someone came to me and said there's just absolutely nothing that secret and they decided they were going to hike into Area 51, I think that could be the biggest and perhaps the last mistake they are going to make in their life. There are rumors of a secret project called Aurora in which the Air Force is said to be inventing a craft using highly advanced technology. I think there's a strong possibility that we have recovered some sort of alien technology and are trying to incorporate that into military programs. Are they really hiding something that's, that's totally alien? Is, is this otherworldly technology that's being applied to Air Force Black Projects? Sonic booms have been reported in Los Angeles. Evidence of high-speed unidentified craft. They've been traced back to Groom Lake, Nevada. We really can't tell what's moving. The only thing we see is, is a sonic boom that's telling us that something is moving faster than the speed of sound. So actually, we can't even tell it's an airplane. The military maintains its position of denial. Every time uh, that there's a story about Aurora or the TR-3A Black Manta in the popular science or the New York Times or something else, Congress calls the Pentagon on the carpet and says, what's the deal? They want to know if these planes exist. And every time they've asked about those planes, they've been told there is no such thing. The military's established a pattern of denial concerning these uh, highly capricious wild aircraft beginning in the late 50s and continuing to this day. Two UFO experts investigated Area 51 up close they saw several red-orange objects in the sky. They started at a great height, seemed to descend, and then flared out. Uh, it was startling. Then a series of uh, silver pewter flashes went directly across the horizon at terrific speed. One of these silver flashes went directly up into the air. The bottom one seemed nearly to hug the ground. When they tried to leave the base, they were stopped by security. Boom, headlights come on, it was an M16 pointed at us, and here we were faced with a life and death situation. But we also knew that we had crossed the line back into public domain, and therefore, we were safe. Three months later, Mark Farmer saw the same red-orange flying objects. I saw the object exhibit entirely unconventional flight characteristics. At times, it would wobble around in the sky and appear very unstable. At other times, it would be in a rock-hard hover. It was an obliterated sphere, multicolored, crimson on bottom, blue-green on top, much brighter than anything else in the sky. Robert Lazar, the aerospace engineer who worked at Area 51, is convinced that these objects were experimental Air Force craft developed from alien technology. He claims there are at least nine flying saucers stored there. I was part of a back engineering group, and our job was basically to look at these recovered disks, and I say recovered because I don't know really where they came from. Whether they were given to us, we found them, shot them down, who knows what. But uh, our group basically was to back engineer them, which means to start with a finished product and go backward and see how it was fabricated. Uh, and try and duplicate some of that technology with earthly materials. To me, Bob Lazar is credible. Over the past couple of years, I've spoken to literally dozens of people who have worked at that facility out there in Nevada. I think the technology at Area 51 originally came from somewhere else. The military disavows any knowledge of the alien technology program. I, I don't think the military has any credibility with the public in terms of its denials of this program or that program. They've denied the U-2 existed, they denied the SR-71 existed, they denied working on stealth. All of those programs suddenly were unveiled. Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries, the destruction of one of NASA's most valuable space probes. Was it intentional? It did not lose transmission. They turned it off. The promising search for extraterrestrial intelligence 
that the government ended abruptly. If our government knew that we got signal from outer space, they clamp a lid on it. The mysterious UFO sightings on the ground at MacDill Air Force Base. It was nearly 100 feet across. The military headquarters for a secret UFO intelligence team. Wright Patterson had something unique to our government, and that was the technical intelligence organization. And the government's refusal to divulge UFO secrets. A lot of people say, well, how can something be kept secret? The F-117 stealth fighter was kept secret for approximately 10 years. And you'll get the ultimate rundown with our Unex report. More secrets, more revelations. Next on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, undercover UFOs. The government's cover-up of alien life extends to other planets. The unmanned Mars Observer was packed with sensitive data-gathering equipment. But it never completed its mission. NASA blamed the failure on technical malfunction. But experts think there's more to NASA's story. It starts with a strange area on the red planet known as Sidonia. It's quite possible that NASA knows more about anomalous structures on Mars, possible extraterrestrials, even structures on our moon that they're not telling us about. There is sufficient evidence to indicate that some of the objects on Mars may possibly be artificial. NASA says the objects on Mars are just light and shadow. But 3D imaging reveals something startling. I was quite interested with the first photos and release of the face on Mars. But particularly, I thought it was interesting, the pyramidal structures. Some of these pyramids appear to have even a central stairway running up and down them. The more we look at these structures, the more we can see that there's, there's something amazing here. Did NASA create a convenient malfunction to hide archaeological evidence of alien life? If some people want to go far beyond the edge of what's accepted in terms of, of, of imagery, see patterns on the rocks of Mars or on the moon or in the rings of Saturn, uh, my, my view to that is mazel tov. Go ahead, do it. Uh, try it out. Make the proposals. These objects, if you measure carefully from the tops of the five that surround this city square point, you find an almost perfectly symmetrical pentagon. The Brookings Institution prepared a report for NASA. It contains a shocking recommendation. There is a section on what might occur if evidence of extraterrestrial existence was found on other planets. They said that NASA or the government might want to consider keeping the information from the public. The reason being that it could cause widespread social unrest and possible deterioration of government control. NASA claims the observer had an electrical failure. It did not lose transmission. They turned it off. And they turned it off after the instructions for going into orbit had been uploaded to the spacecraft. It was possible then that the spacecraft would go ahead, follow out those instructions, and go into orbit. Before we start saying how these rocket scientists messed up, and they did mess up, we have to keep realizing just how tough these projects are. That we're doing things out there in space every time we do it that no one even thought was possible a few years or decades ago. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Huge radio telescopes aimed at the sky. Their purpose, to capture radio signals from alien civilizations. But the program is shrouded in secrecy. I think if our government knew that we got signals, a dedicated signal from outer space somewhere, uh, they'd clamp a lid on it. Our source, a space program engineer, knows the risks. If the powers that be knew I was talking to you, it would be a high price for me to pay. After years of denying the existence of UFOs, the government abruptly decides to spend millions on searching for aliens. But there's a catch. It's very hard to believe that the government would allow something this extraordinary uh, to 
be released to the general public without scrutiny and censorship. In the Mojave Desert, the government set up Goldstone Station on a military base. It's RF quiet, uh, which means there's not a lot of background noise when they're looking for signals. It's really ideal for this type of search. Soon after coming online, the telescopes picked up signals called hits. There were hits that were taken seriously. There were three, four hits, to my knowledge, uh, that were strong, and uh, it could potentially be a signal from an extraterrestrial intelligence. Then, the government suddenly shut down the program. It was a cheap shot for the budget posers, for the so-called uh, deficit hawks. It's always easy, easier to make fun of something that you or, your, or enough of your constituents don't understand. But some experts take issue with that explanation. If they embrace the concept of looking for alien signals, they also have to acknowledge the fact that the alien signals are coming from an extraterrestrial intelligence somewhere. And for certain people, that's not something that they want to either believe in or allow anybody to know that they believe in. Some people believe the National Security Agency killed SETI because it feared the public would panic. Their history uh, and action in the past uh, is a good warning of what they would do if something like this happened. SETI was resurrected by several major corporations and renamed Project Phoenix. But the government maintained a strong, though unpublicized, presence. If the hits do come down, they will be suppressed. And I don't think anybody will take a chance. The government would never make that leap of faith that the public uh, would be able to handle the fact that we are receiving intelligence signals from another race, creature, something from somewhere else. Next on Unexplained Mysteries, the Air Force officer who saw a number of UFOs. My gosh, those are flying saucers. Those things really do exist. Or were they experimental military planes? A lot of people say they're from deep space, but they could just as easily be from this world. Find out how the military dealt with questions about the aircraft. They had no record of such an aircraft ever existing. And we get to the truth about the UFO conspiracy in the Unex Report, next on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries Undercover UFOs. Reports are increasing of UFOs spotted at airbases, but with a striking difference. These craft are on the ground. McDill Air Force Base, Florida, 1967. An officer witnesses an inconceivable sight. We were near a restricted area of the base, and all of a sudden we saw four aircraft parked out there, and our immediate reaction to each other was, my gosh, those are flying saucers. Those things really do exist. Pickett published the Air Force Base newspaper. He wanted to do an article about the craft he'd seen, including photos. I was called up to the adjutant general's office. He went over to a file cabinet and got out a whole bunch of photographs. And he proceeded to lay these photographs out on a large table so that I could look at them. Well, of course, I, my interest per perked up instantly when I began to see literally hundreds of photographs of all types of quote unquote flying saucers. The Air Force refused to allow Pickett to publish the article. That night, eyewitnesses in Miami reported a large number of UFO sightings. At the airbase the next day, the flying saucers were gone. The images have haunted Pickett for years. Desperate for some kind of explanation, he recently contacted former Air Force intelligence officer, George Filer. A lot of people say, well, how can something be kept secret for 50 years? Well, I point out that the F-117 stealth fighter was kept secret for approximately 10 years. And most of us didn't know that it existed until the government released the information. I pointedly ask him, not only are these where the flying saucers stories came from, is this what they were? And he said, yes. Well, I was awestruck. I couldn't really believe I was seeing what I was seeing. Some of those photographs had many, many aircraft in them, and they were all easily identifiable as Air Force photographs are. 
And uh, I asked him, well, how high and how fast could these things go? You hear all these stories. And he said, well, this particular aircraft could go fast enough and high enough to actually achieve space flight. And I had no idea when he was telling me this story that wouldn't be too long before they were declared non-existent. To this day, Pickett is determined to prove what he saw was real. This is a, an illustration of one of the largest ones parked down. In fact, it was the largest. It was nearly 100 feet across. But yes, when Pickett hello. tried recently to get the photographs and documentation of the craft, the Air Force said no. When I initially wrote, I began to get answers back. They had been, didn't have the faintest idea of what I was talking about. I got letters from high-ranking officers that they had no record of such an aircraft ever existing. So I knew that it was top secret again. Many UFO experts believe the technology for the saucer-shaped aircraft came from an alien spaceship that crashed near Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. At that time, if the military had recovered a downed UFO, they would have transported it to Wright-Patterson Air Base in Ohio. Wright-Patterson had something unique to our government, and that was the Technical Intelligence Organization, so-called P2, or what became the Foreign Technology Division. This is the sort of division that would have been appropriate to use for the investigation of UFO research. Three former Wright-Patterson employees filed aircraft patent requests. The designs looked suspiciously like flying saucers. Some people think their inspiration was the extraterrestrial craft that crashed near Roswell. So there's something out there that people are seeing. And the question, of course, is who do they belong to? A lot of people say they're from deep space, you know, but they could just as easily be from this world. Next, the Onyx Report. The answers you want to hear about UFOs. Are they alien spacecraft, military aircraft, or advanced Air Force vehicles based on harvested alien technology? You'll hear the final word on the possible UFO threat and military cover-up. And we'll take one last look at the military's intimidation of innocent UFO eyewitnesses. We'll wrap it all up for you with our Unex Report when Unexplained Mysteries returns. Experts believe the U.S. government is conducting a massive conspiracy to keep evidence about UFOs and aliens from the public. The military has established a pattern of denial concerning these uh, highly capricious wild aircraft beginning in the late 50s and continuing to this day. Thousands of witnesses have reported seeing unknown flying craft with similar details. A 36-foot object, which is basically almost the same size as our aircraft, a 36-foot wingspan. This is a full-size craft, 30, 35 feet in diameter. This is your classic flying saucer. And something comes into the frame and ch chasing it, and comes in like this and fires at it, and goes around like this and fires at it, and goes around like this and fires at it, and fires at it like this, and then goes back out that way. What the hell could do that? The government UFO conspiracy begins with denial. And he said, what was that? And I said, it looks to me like we got a UFO. And he said, you are never to say that again. As far as you're concerned, Lieutenant Jacobs, this never happened. The government even has a word for its systematic pattern of lies, disinformation. Our government does it all the time. There are even printed guidelines for how cover stories, disinformation, are supposed to work. This is uh, That's disinformation. That's lying through your teeth to the American people. The conspiracy uses threats and intimidation, even targeting military personnel. The powers that be knew I was talking to you, it would be a high price for me to pay. They've threatened people and intimidated people. They've spied on UFO groups, infiltrated UFO groups, spied on researchers, compiled dossiers. 
Their response is bordered on paranoia. And they said, well, the government doesn't like the information being released, and to continue could be detrimental to your health. The military cover-up conceals UFO breaches of national security. That when one object came low over a weapon storage area, that appeared to demonstrate a clear intent over this area, meaning it seemed to have intelligence. The conspiracy withholds reports of radio signals from outer space that confirm the existence of alien life. It's very hard to believe that the government would allow something this extraordinary uh, to be released to the general public without scrutiny and censorship. And the government denies the reverse engineering of their infamous black projects. I think there's a strong possibility that we have recovered some sort of alien technology and are trying to incorporate that into military programs. I got letters from high-ranking officers that they had no record of such an aircraft ever existing. Secrets can be kept. Secrets are kept. And every time they've asked about those planes, they've been told there is no such thing. Why does our government hide information on extraterrestrial life from us? The reason being that it could cause widespread social unrest and possible deterioration of government control. How do you prove a government cover-up when their tools are denial and disinformation? Only facts made public will verify the conspiracy. Until then, it will remain an unexplained mystery. Our government has flat out lied to us for 40 years or more.